to the highest level. So turn your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 1. Hallelujah. And let's go in the verse 18. Is This is where I want to start. Knowing that God has divinely called you as a believer. As a born-again Christian, God has got a prophetic divine calling. You, are, you, carry, you carry a watchman's heart. Every single believer needs to carry a watchman's heart, Need to know how God is using them in the kingdom, and how to take their place in the body of Christ, how to walk as a servant in the body of Christ, and in so always having a watchman's heart because you're looking out for each other in the body of Christ. Not just that nation level, but all the way down to individuals looking out for one another, carrying the heart of God over each other. Because this is why, this is how we win as the church in the long run is because we're keeping each other oversighted. We're watching over each other. We're praying over each other. We're loving over each other. Somebody say yes and amen. It doesn't change. Jesus said love them. He said let your love be seen so that they, they will see your good works. Your love one for another is everything and that's a God agape love. That's a love that cares for, a love that watches over, and that's a love that encourages and exhorts. No matter how big or small your ministry is, you, we, we all stand in the exact same place of letting God operate in it. So we walk in the love of God. This is 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul speaking to the young man, getting him focused on his doctrinal purpose. Let me say doctrinal purpose. If we don't have doctrinal sound, if we don't have doctrinal purpose, then we don't have anything. So knowing the word of God is first and foremost because then we understand our position in the body of Christ. Paul had told the church at Ephesus, welcome everyone. Paul had told the church at Ephesus that the purpose of the church is to, to be a revelation, even to the very principalities and powers in the heavenly realm. So your life is a revelation to, to all of heaven. So the call of, think about, think about this. You have such a purpose that your life is to be a revelation to heaven as well as to earth, to see the goodness and the mercy of God flowing through your life. Which means that you're not just a sinner saved by grace, you are a sinner to be transformed into the image of the Son of God, to be called a child of God, to be given the authority to become sons and daughters of God, to walk in the abundance of the grace of God and express the kingdom of God, be a brand new transformed individual. All things pass away, all things become new. Does that make sense? We are a uniquely transformed people. We are being changed and transformed, different from all of the world. That puts us in a position of responsibility. So knowing the strength of the word of God and the soundness of the word of God helps shape everything that we are called to be. The more the word of God you know, the Bible tells us in Colossians, the more of the word that we know, the more we can know the will and the perfect will of God. The more of the word we know, the more of the will of God we know. So by knowing the will of God, we can walk in the calling and the election of God. Why? Because we've got the word of God. We get the word, we get the will. When we get the will, we get the calling. We get the calling, we get the directions of our life. Somebody say yes and amen to that. Everything that we do as believers and as pastors and churches is to know what the word of God is because in this is the will of God. And the will of God then connects to the call of God. That is the unique position that you have as a believer in the body of Christ. It doesn't matter at whatever level. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, if it's nursery or youth or children or helping out, ushering and greeting. These are all positions of servanthood in the body of Christ that are just naturally a part of the call of God in every believer's life. In this, though, we, uh, we find, as Paul is speaking to Timothy, and, and he's putting a demand on him to know the soundness of doctrine, know the soundness of the word, he then now wants him to know the prophetic Part of his life. That's why, that's why that I'm titling this The Watchman's Heart because there's got to be a dimension in your life where you are called to be most effective. Somebody say most effective. You can't do everything, but you can do what God calls you to do with excellence. I can't be everybody else's ministry and calling, but I can be what God's called me to, and I can do that with excellence, knowing my unique spot, knowing my place in the kingdom of God and saying, devil, get out of my way. Why? Because I'm going to run my race with an abundance of grace. 
Hallelujah. So what Paul says, he says, this charge then, verse 18, this, this charge then, I commit to you, my son Timothy, that's the relationship, according to all the prophetic word that was previously made concerning you, and by them you may wage as a, as a soldier a good warfare because of what's been handed to you. As a child of God, as a young man dedicated to Christ, there came that point in his life when God began to shape the unique purpose of what his purpose was in the body of Christ. And that was the heart and the prophetic mind of God that began to come on him. And then Paul said, according to what God said about you and you confirmed it, I need you to run in that direction. Somebody say run. In the direction the Holy Ghost with confirmation has put in his life, he didn't just give it to him, to just give it to him. He said, therefore, then, act like a soldier. Soldiers are willing to go to war. Sometimes civilians want to sit down. Soldiers want to go to war. Soldier is trained to go to war. So think about this. He calls you a soldier of Christ. That means as a soldier for Christ, there is a warfare you are going to be engaged in from the littlest things to the greatest thing, the fighting against the devil, sickness, disease, everything you're going to go to war against, he said, so that as a soldier, then you can fight your expedition. Here is where you're going to battle. And think about this. The expedition is to take this city or, or to take this nation or whatever is the expedition of a soldier. You as a Christian, you are handed as a soldier your expedition. You're going to learn how to fight this faith fight. You're going to run this race. You're going to move in this direction. Does that make sense to everybody? He says, now this is what's been handed to you, and therefore having faith in a good conscience, which some might have rejected, you're going to stand your ground. They lose it, they suffer shipwreck, but you've got faith and a very good conscience. Now I want you to turn over to Ezekiel 33. Got some scripture for us today because, you know, the, the watchman's heart goes all the way through, not just to the highest levels of ministry. It's every single believer needs to know that, listen, this is what, this is what will transform and change the nations. Let me say change the nations. Change the nations. When we carry the heart of God, the watchman heart, and we have the soldier's mind, and we're willing to step into the expedition, go to war for the purpose of winning a battle. That is how lives are saved, people are healed, and nations are changed. It's when we want to ignore all this other stuff and just sit out in our blessed assurance, as we would say, and go nowhere, then nothing gets done. But God has called every single believer to understand the warfare heart. You need to know that. Now, now, now in Ezekiel 33... As he says to this prophet, as he says to him, this is the watchman, this is the watchman calling, this is the watchman's heart. Notice he says, and the word of the Lord, this is verse 33 of Ezekiel, the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, when I bring the sword upon a land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land and if he blows the trumpet and warns the people... Then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword come and takes him away, his blood's on his own head. That makes sense, doesn't it? I make you the watchman for the wall, and you do your job. That means you're going to see the enemy. You're going to shout down here because you're way up there, and I'm going to hear what you're saying, and I'm going to make a decision. Or you stand outside in other towns and other areas where the enemy might come in, and when you see the enemy coming, you send, you know, you send those that are runners, and they're going to tell the people, the people get themselves ready. Why? Because you're always staying in the place of guarding that which is under your authority. Standing in the place of guarding the city, the house, the town, the family, your home, whatever it is. And when you see something, it's to move on it and begin to shout the warning to the others. And he says, verse 7, So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the entire house of Israel. This is a spiritual watchman, warning against everything coming against, hearing the word of God, seeing the enemies that would fight you, and when you see them, turning and confronting by warning the people. That's why as Christians... As Christians in his churches, we stand as watchmen over homes and, and, and lives and, and nations and towns and communities. We're always here to listen to the Holy Spirit in the call of God, just like Timothy had to run his race 
because God had given him the direction. Therefore, Timothy had to walk as a watchman over all that God gave him. So doing that, he could, as long as you are willing, somebody say willing, as long as you are willing to accept that into your spirit, that God wants to warn things, he wants to reveal things, he wants to share things, and you are open vessel, then you can hear God. You'll put yourself in a place. As long as you are willing, somebody say willing. If we don't want to hear God, then God won't speak to us. But God's looking for the open heart, the willing vessel, with the right attitude that says, Lord, you show me. And God's heart for his people is explosive. His heart to see his church grow, his church expand, your life to have victory, diseases, sicknesses, attacks, it doesn't matter what it is. All that Satan's kingdom comes in against you. It is his delight and desire to break every bit of it. So here, so here, here, he puts the, he puts the prophet as a watchman to rescue. Somebody say rescue. To call out, to confront, to challenge, to declare, to give warning, to give heed, and if need be, give direction. So as believers in our daily walk, we are looking for what God is saying so we can confront, whether it's in ourselves, our home, our family, everything else. Somebody say yes and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I want you to turn over to Ezekiel 37. Just go a couple of verses, or just a couple of chapters. And and in this, we, we find out something. Part of the process is to bring lives back into kingdom order. Somebody say kingdom order. This is Ezekiel 37. So as the watchman on the wall, as a watchman in your life, think about just being a watchman over your own life. Keep a guard on yourself. You know, Jesus said, pray after this manner, you know, and lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from every evil thing. That is a submission to the conviction. Are you with me here? To lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from every evil or from the Satan's operations against my life is a submission to be willing to listen to the conviction of the Holy Spirit to warn you. Think about that. That is a willingness to have the conviction of the Lord convict me. So he's going to say, I'm going to convict you. I'm going to be a watchman over you, and I want you to listen, because I need you to become then that watchman over yourself. I'm willing to convict you if you're willing to listen. And you've got to be willing to say, God, I'm willing because I want you to lead me not, therefore convict me so I know which way to run. That's how we walk. We've got to walk it in our daily lives so then we can hear God when it comes to things that are going on around us. If it's happening in me first, that's where it all starts. Somebody say yes. Conviction of God's got to happen in me first. I got to be the watchman over my own life. I need the word of God to watch over my life. I got to make sure I'm walking in the platform God needs me to walk. Because as long as that's flowing in me, that means it can begin to flow through me and then out of me. It starts here and then flows here. Somebody say yes and amen. In Ezekiel chapter 37, part of this work is to rebuild lives. Calling dry bone, calling life, Back into everything that, the, that death tries to claim. And that's death of vision, death of purpose. It does not matter. Everything the devil is, family, kids, it does not matter. There is a call of God to always bring lives and souls back to the design and the, the desired intent that God created them for. In Ezekiel 37, God is, God is showing the prophet a, the whole nation is dead dry bones. But God is saying, if you'll speak into that nation, I will transform that nation, and I will bring an army of holiness out of that nation. You've got Timothy now having to speak over an entire region, calling men into the kingdom of God, being strengthened with all might in his inner man. We see the the watchman heart in your life, and now we see the goal. What am I watching for? Notice in in 37, the hand, this is chapter 37 of Ezekiel, the hand of the Lord, came upon me and brought me out in the Holy Ghost. Let me say in the Holy Ghost. Ah, church, nothing like having the Holy Ghost moving in your life. Everything is by the Holy Spirit. You want the power of God. You want the anointing of God. You want the utterance of God. You want the strength of God. See, that's what you and I get that the world don't have. You get the Holy Spirit. Jesus walked full of the Holy Spirit. He walked with his Father by the Holy Ghost. That's why he walked with such peace. And you and I can have the exact same thing as believers. 
Hunger and thirst for more of the Holy Ghost. Hunger and thirst for as much of God. It's not just the things you do here. It's God. I'm telling you, there's nothing like hungry after the very presence of God and surrendering yourself so that God can begin to move on the inside because then he lifts you up. Listen, when the Holy Ghost lifts you up, he'll lift you up into the plane of what he's doing. He'll bring you into the platform of his kingdom. He will show you things you never thought that you would ever know in the natural realm because he wants to lift you spiritually into the place because he wants to show you his power, his might. His, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling somebody this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Haramu bebe bene senda makanda remo sandume menda ne kandu mabu bahanda mabahai. God wants to elevate you into the place of His kingdom, so He might show you the things that He is and the things that He delights to do. He wants to pour these things into you and elevate you into Himself, so that you would know Him intimately and personally. So when you come forth from His presence, you will come forth with might and the authority and the wisdom, and you will be a watchman to God when it comes to the things going on about your life. God will raise you up. Hallelujah. There is nothing but the might of God. So he puts this demand on the prophet and the spirit of God grabs a hold of him, brings him into the vision and the heart of God, shows him a valley full of dry bones and the Holy Ghost and he causes him to walk all the way through and observe everything I'm showing you from the kingdom of God perspective. And then he said, son of man, can these bones ever live? And there's the watchman on the wall. You are here to warn. And here you're finding part of the level of your warning is to speak life where there has been death, blessing where there has been cursing, increase in abundance where there has been lack. What the devil has tried to destroy, you have come to speak the life of God in the name of Jesus and that life with an abundance. You've come to reverse the curse. <clears throat> Come to reverse the curse. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so he says, son of man, can these bones live? And he says, you know, Lord. And he said to him, huh, prophesy, speak for. <clears throat> speak for what God has put into your spirit. Timothy was to wage a warfare according to the prophetic of God. He was to know what God put in him so he could release it and reveal it. He was going to disciple a huge church at and multiples of people, and he was going to have to war against all the false apostles and the false prophets and everything coming against them. So you and I need to know at our place in our battle what God has put in us so we can, re we can rehearse. Somebody say rehearse. What God put in you. Somebody say what God put in me. Not what man put in me, not what I put in me, not what life put in me. You want to rehearse what God put in you. And here the Spirit of God says to the prophet, I'm putting this in you. You are to prophesy to these bones and you are to say, dry bones, hear the word of God. And when death hears the word of God, death has to leave and life has to come forth. And the Bible says that the prophet of God was to speak of forth life and provision and bring the whole man back into divine order for the Holy Ghost to fill him. God never goes halfway. He finishes what he started. Expect it. Even when you don't see it, this sometimes is your test in the battle. Your faith and your warfare is a warfare because you're fighting against something. You're fighting against that which is fighting against what God put in you. You are fighting against that which is fighting against what God has said to you. You are fighting against that which is trying to take your faith away because you're not seeing it. You're fighting against your flesh nature. You're fighting against your own thoughts. But you're fighting knowing what God put in you and that's what you're going to use and stand your ground until the victory is yours because the battle always was the Lord's. Knowing that we have to make a decision. I'm not going to stop fighting because God put a fight in me. And here he says to Ezekiel, you're going to prophesy when? All the way until the day that everything is accomplished. He says, I want you to see. Somebody say see. I want you to see the end result in your spirit. Well, you're going to speak life into something, then see life in your mind, in your heart. That's faith sees something, and faith begins to receive something. you got to see that healing power of God. you got to see the miracle power of God. You, because if you look at it in the natural, you will not speak the word. But when you are looking in the spirit of God, and you see it healed and done and restored, that's what you're pulling towards you. So here, Ezekiel got the vision of the completed picture. 
the army was all the way until they stood up a mighty army full with fire and with power in the Holy Ghost. I want you to go to First Corinthians, uh, first, um, sorry, Second Corinthians, chapter ten. Second, somebody say Second Corinthians. Bless the Lord. Go to Second Corinthians, not First, Second. Okay, make sure you get there. And we get to Second Corinthians chapter ten. Let's look at that spiritual warfare. Now. We're going to go here, and I want, to, I want to read something about Jeremiah in just a moment. But I want you to look at the purpose of the weapon tree. Remember, he's got, he is called a soldier. Timothy is a soldier. <clears throat> he's to do the work of a soldier, and he's to engage in the expedition. And his expedition is, is connected to what God has put in his spirit and the anointing of God that's on his life. You know, the anointing of God, what, what God's put on you, you're going to find is the easiest thing to do sometimes. You try to be things that you're not, you're going to fail and fumble, but will you just be what God's anointing is in you? You know, God makes that the easiest thing that can come out of you because it's God moving through you. Let God fill you and show you and then just do as that works because God will bless it. He doesn't want to be a burden. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you because I have, you know, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when I put it on you, you can walk in what I put in you. Somebody say yes. Just find what God has put on you because it'll be the thing that, that, that prospers most in your life. Look at this, chapter, uh, chapter 10, 2 Corinthians. And here's what Paul writes in verse 3. We all know this, but we got to keep looking at it, keep looking at it. Because you got to know how to rehearse the word. Somebody say, rehearse the word. I'm going to rehearse the word. I'm going to see your victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm going to rehearse the word. Say, I'm going to rehearse. I'm going to rehearse. Hallelujah, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war that way. The natural things do not, uh, it's not how we're battling against what we see, but we're battling with the word of God against those things that are behind the scenes. In order to bring dry bones back to life, in order to see the advancement of the kingdom of God, the watchman on the wall is still a soldier, and that's what you are. So you're going to have to fight as a soldier. It says, here it says, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to pulling down every spiritual, every opposition, every wall, every imagination, every false thinking process, everything that's been trying to dominate the heart and the mind. The word of God is power to bring a changing your thinking by the power of the word of God. Breaking that stronghold over your mind that has you thinking and your mind running away in this direction. And the Spirit of God and the Word of God can pull that thing down and put the mind of Christ in you. Somebody say yes and amen. This is the pulling down of strongholds, cast down every argument, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. This is what the weapons of your warfare, this is what the infilling power of the Holy Spirit this is what God's word of wisdom, this is what God's word of knowledge and God's discernment of spirit, this is what God's revelation of himself does. It takes the place. And by the revelation of God on my life, I can tear down that which is not of God. This revelation of God is greater than all these other so-called revelations. Am I making sense to somebody here? When I get the God thing going in my head, the thing that was trying to control me, the God thing now can tear it down. I got something to what? Replace it with. Get the kingdom of God in my mind. Get the word of God in my mind. And that will tear down everything that doesn't belong in my mind. Somebody say yes and amen. Your mind can be renewed because the word of God and the kingdom of God is what you grab a hold of. And that's what you use to tear down what doesn't belong in there. Hallelujah. Everything he even bring, it says, to bring captive every thought to obedience to allow I'm submitted to Christ and that lying spirit has been overthrown. The thoughts of death and sickness and disease and everything, oppressions and addictions and bondages and the power of sin, all these things are overthrown and all that stuff is brought under the feet of Jesus Christ and commanded to come into obedience because there's something greater moving in you. The kingdom of God is now transforming your thoughts and your life. Go to Jeremiah real quick, chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, all the, I know I threw you right back into the Old Testament. Kind of just threw you there, didn't I? Jeremiah chapter 1. Look at what God put into the prophet. And I'm going to tell you something here about this guy. Um, you got, I want you to listen to what God says to him. Now, 
Was Jeremiah running around with a sword in his hand killing people? No, he wasn't. That was not what Jeremiah was going to do. Okay? But here's what, but here's what God said about the words. The authority. The weapons of our warfare are not calm, but they're mighty through God. They are the word of God, the revelation of God, the kingdom of God. The things that God says that, that overthrows one thing and builds something and establishes something. This is what Jeremiah was coming with, the word of the Lord. So the word of God was going to be the confrontive force. Your weapon as a soldier for God is the word that's in your mouth and in your heart. As a believer, you speak life over to your family. You may have to drive death down and tear it down and overthrow this, but you're there so that you can rebuild this. Notice what he says to Jeremiah, verse 5, first. He says, that this, is, this is chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed you, I already knew you. Before you were born, I already sanctified you. God foreknew you before the foundations of the world. He already set, set you apart for the work of God. Before he foreknew you, he predestined you. To be conformed to the image of his son. Therefore, those he poured food, those, he, those whom he foreknew, these are the ones that he called, these are the ones that he called, these are the ones that he justified, the ones he justified, he sanctified, and the ones he sanctified, he glorified. It goes all the way. So the prophet of God, your life, is something from the foundations of the world. But he says this, so this is how I foreknew you. And look at verse, uh, look at verse 9 and 10. He says, behold, this is verse 9 and a half, okay, just go 9 and a half. Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. When it, when it comes to being the watchman's heart, you've got to have the mind and the mouth of God. Remember, you are bringing the warning and you're bringing the declaration. You're commanding dry bones to come to life. Life instead of death. Again, blessing instead of cursing. Increase in abundance instead of lack. Health instead of disease and sickness. So there's got to be the watchman's heart. There's got to be a heart that can do something. Bring these dry bones back to life. So there's got to be a powerful anointing of a warfare spirit on the inside of you so you can bring the kingdom of God to advance. You're a soldier. That means you're a fighter. Bless God. So he says, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms. Think about the realm of your authority. Jeremiah wasn't just going to prophesy to, about Israel. He was going to prophesy to all the nations around Israel. He had a word from God for Edom and for Egypt. And he had, he had a word for, you know, for Babylon and for Syria. And for us, Syria, he had a word for all of them. God's given you a realm and a dimension in that watchman's heart to how far you can release the word of God. And you know it. Remember, he could do exceedingly and abundantly, above all you can ask or think. So we get ourselves stirred up and act. Why? If it's in me to speak that direction, I'm going to speak it. If it's in you to speak it, you might as well. Why not? Just start speaking the word. Don't say, well, that's, well, I, I don't know if my word goes that far. Well, try it. Start throwing the word out as far as you know to do. Whatever is in your heart, let the word of God flow. And here God had told Jeremiah, I've given you authority over kings and all these other things. And notice what it says, to root out, to pull down, and to destroy. To root out all the sin, pull down all the strongholds, and destroy all the works of the devil. That's where it comes to you and I. To root it out, pull it out, and wipe it out. Jesus said, the devil had come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and abundantly, life abundantly, which means he's come to undo, overthrow, and destroy all the works of the enemy. Watchman anointing with the watchman heart says, you've come with the word of God. I got to pull down that lie. I got to overthrow that deception. I got to root out that thing that's been embedded so that I can what? Notice it says, so I can build and I can plant. Tear out all old things so all things to become new. Think about this over your life. I got to pull down garbage out of your mind. You got to pull down garbage out of your heart. You got to pull this junk out. Why? Because there's a reason for it. He didn't just end it that way with Jeremiah. He says, but you can rebuild and you can plant. Fresh seed, seed, good seed, good soil. Farmer sows a good seed, but we got to get the rocks out. We got to get everything else out so we can complete the task. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to First Timothy. Now, 
I'm going to bring it down here. Well, no, not yet, because I can, because I can preach till November. And this is December, which means next year. <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> See how quick I was with that. I, I just said, I can preach till November. Wait a minute, Pastor, it's December. That's right, 2022. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh my. So we might all be a little gamey, but hey, you know what? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, all that is within me. Now, 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 let's, let's grab our Bible. Let's look at chapter 4. Let's look at verse 12. In those, as you stand as a soldier and a watchman, calling dry bones and things around you back to life, standing with the ability because you've been equipped with the weaponry to tear down. Think about it. Get into the spirit and see every lying thing coming against the body of Christ and against the people of God and go to war after that thing. Not after the people, after that thing which is going to war against them. Every lying spirit trying to hold people in bondage. You're going to war against these things. Your family goes to it. You go to war in the Holy Ghost first, if at all possible. You know, it's tough when you got half a dozen kids or a dozen and a half kids. You got to go to war in the Holy Ghost after you get done with their daily beating. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> now that you're all quiet, go to your room so I can pray for your souls. But right now, I want to send you all to Jesus. <laughs> Verse 12, chapter 4. Therefore, there's a responsibility. Somebody say responsibility. We always got to come back down to my responsibility. And it's a character thing. To have all these things is great, but to carry the responsibility, the weight of responsibility inside so that I can walk and not faint and not trip over my own feet. So the most important element in the Word of God in your calling, in that watchman attitude over your life and things around you is number one, you. Making sure your heart and your life is standing in the divine relationship with God because anything that's in there that doesn't belong, the devil is going to use to fight you in a battle that God didn't design you to fight. He wants you this way, but because you lit something in here, he's gonna, the devil's going to fight you there. we got to get it out so we can get the glory in. Amen. The watchman heart, that remains. The call of God remains. The giftings and callings of God are with what? Without repentance. And since they are without repentance, it's always God's will and God's desire to bring you and I all the way through. But sometimes we got to stop and make sure all of this is in check with the Word of God. And that's why it says, and Lord, lead me not into temptation. If I'm, not, if I'm willing to listen, then God can speak to me. Notice what he says. He says, let no one despise your youth. Now, I know we're not all spring chickens, but it doesn't matter we're all, we're all in the spring of our life. So let no man despise the youthfulness of the call and the anointing on your life. Doesn't matter how old you are. You could have a youthfulness, a new spring in your step, a youthfulness in the call. All you need is purpose. And everything about you changes. And you get that purpose. And you get that youthfulness hunger to see God move and still walk in and through your life. It doesn't matter. Let no man despise that spirit of fire on the inside of you. You are a soldier for God, young and old. You're a warrior to fight an expedition. You're standing as a watchman on a wall. You're commanding dry bones to come to life. You're tearing down everything that's in the way. You are called with an anointing. You're going to go for it all the way till the day. There never comes a day where you retire from being a child of God or retire from being, in, being a kingdom. You know when you pass off the baton is when you die. <laughs> you don't pass batons. You may transition ministries and things, but you never pass the baton of your calling and your purpose. You never just pass that. That is yours to run with all the way to the day. <clears throat> and let God pass it on to the next you don't give up your calling. Somebody say, I ain't giving it up. I ain't, give, say, I ain't giving it up. I ain't giving it up. No man's going to despise my youthful heart. Bless the Lord. I'm going to war in Jesus' name. So let no man despise your youth, but, in it, but on the sense of it, as a believer, 
be an example. And he says in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe, therefore I speak. With the same spirit of faith, we believe what God said. Therefore, we're going to speak what God said. Actually, I'm going to turn that. I'm almost done here. Actually, I promise I am. It says here, 2 Corinthians, Paul had to have a word, did he not? If he had the word, he could speak the word. Hallelujah. Paul said, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to, this is verse 13, chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, according to what is written. <clears throat> See, if I'm, my example is in word. My first example is in the confession of my mouth. That's where, you be, that's where you stand as an example to people is what comes out of your mouth. The first thing they're going to judge you on is going to be the words that come from your mouth. Out of the mouth come blessings and cursings. Choose life. Here it says, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. That's the word. Therefore he says, therefore we believe what's been written, and therefore we speak. So we've got to have the word of God in us. We've got to have the conduct of God in us. We've got to have the divine love of God operating in us. We've got to have the spirit of faith, the spirit of zeal. The Bible says, and in spirit. That is zeal. Somebody say zeal. You've got to have zeal for the call of God. John's Gospel, chapter 2, the disciples said that when Jesus was so zealous over the temple, we remember the zeal of your house. Do you have zeal for the call of God in you? Do you have zeal and the compassion? Do you have the word that God's put on you to stand in that word? Because there's a watchman on the wall. There's got to be a kingdom of God in you. There's got to be a word of God in you. So he says in all these things, Timothy, in order for you to be effective as a good soldier, to run your race, to finish your fight, operate the course, he says that you need to make sure in yourself these principles, just like, just like a giant flame, are burning on the inside of you. I got the word of God in me. I got the faith. Notice, let's just read that. He's got the word of God in me. I got the conduct of character on the inside of me. I'm walking in the compassion, <clears throat> sorry of God, and the love of God for the living. Somebody say love. You can go nowhere unless you love them. You are useless in the kingdom. Unless you let the love of God dominate God's love for their best interest. Let the love of God dominate you. In the zeal that's in your heart. In the faith that can move a mountain. Have the faith of God, which comes from what? The word of God. So now that I have to have the word, which is my confession, I got to have the faith of God, which is my action in my confession. And he brings it down in faith and in purity. Now stand your feet in the house. Everything we are as believers <clears throat> comes to us because we make a decision. The watchman's heart is the heart that God puts in us to reach out to others and see their lives transformed. But as, but as Timothy, to know that anointing and that calling. You know, Jesus stood up in a boat in the middle of a storm and he commanded the storm to cease. Why? Because he was exactly where he was supposed to be. When we're walking as the watchmen, as the believers in God, and guarding ourselves, guarding our heart, knowing the warfare we are about, in the little things and in the bigger things, just having the word of God. When the storm comes, you're able to stand up and say, you're done. And begin fighting back. And win. Because we are willing to to take our place. Dry bones need to come back to life. Maybe areas of your life need to be hit with the resurrection power of God. Maybe with the Jeremiah anointing, there's things that be pulled out, rooted out, thrown down. It does not matter. We stand in nations that need to be delivered, so we got to speak against the spirit of selfishness and, and greed and, and communism in this nation and, and all kinds of vile things and perversion. I speak the glory of God to root this garbage out and bring ways of righteousness. In order to be effective that way, come on, dry bones alive and be a watchman on the nation, we also have to guard our own heart. 
We've got to be people of the word, people of faith, people of purity, the zeal of God, the heart of God, the compassion of God.